My name is Richard Lavoie, and I'm the director of the Eagle Hill School Outreach Program based in Greenwich, Connecticut. In a few moments, we're going to fill this room with an audience of people who will have the opportunity to experience what it's like to actually be a learning disabled child. Six to ten percent of the children in the United States today suffer from learning disabilities. This translates to hundreds of thousands of children and hundreds of thousands of families that are affected by this disability. In order to understand learning disabilities and what the child goes through, we of course must first understand what the term means. And when we talk about learning disabled children, we don't talk about what the child is, but we talk rather about what he is not. It's a definition of exclusion. In other words, give me five children that aren't functioning in the classroom. Take away the child who's mentally impaired, mentally retarded in some way. Take away the child who has a primary emotional disturbance. Take away the child who's not had the opportunity to learn. And take away the child who has some modality deficit, who perhaps is deaf or blind. The child that remains is a learning disabled child. That is, the child is not functioning in school, and yet his modalities are intact, He's had the opportunity to learn. He's not disturbed and he's not retarded. One of the most common misconceptions about learning disabilities is that it's a school problem. When in actuality it affects every waking moment of the child's day. For that reason, we've called together a group of people today that view the child through very, very different eyes. We have a social worker, a psychologist, a recreational therapist, a regular education teacher, special education teachers, and most importantly, parents, teachers, and friends of learning disabled children. And those people will have the opportunity to walk for a mile in the shoes of the learning disabled child and see firsthand the frustration, anxiety, and tension that those children experience in school every day. The rules are very simple. First of all, this is not a role-playing activity. It's what's called simulation. Now, if you don't want to participate in this, if you would prefer to sit this out and you don't want to be called on, if you don't like being embarrassed in front of people and being asked to do things you can't do and being made to feel really uncomfortable, okay? That's tough. Because one of the things that you've got to gain as a parent or a teacher dealing with learning disabled people is this, the idea of problem ownership. You see, the learning disabled child isn't learning disabled just so he can mess up your English class eighth period every day. He's not learning disabled just to complicate your lifestyle at home. He has no choice. So, we want everyone to participate. The first rule, the second rule is please no role playing. We don't want you to try to act like kids. The material will make it difficult for you to function. There is no need for you to try to make it worse than it really is, okay? <laughs> and I am going to have the bias that many mainstream teachers have, which is that LD means lazy and dumb. And if you just push the kids and motivate them enough, they can learn, it's that they choose not to. Um, again, please just follow along with me. Don't take anything personally. We'll have a good time doing this thing. Nobody's going to get hurt, but uh, you will get a chance to see what it's like to be a learning disabled child. What color is the booklet, Carol? Blue. What's it say in the front of the booklet, uh, Kit? What's it stand for, Carolyn? What does it stand for, Carolyn? I don't know. What is it? It says at the bottom of the book. What's it stand for, Maria? Frustration, anxiety, and tension. Frustration, anxiety, and tension. Uh, what kind of animal is top of the page, Carol? Uh, bird. Turn to the next page. What color is the first page, Jane? Blue. Uh, what does it say in the first page, Carol? The first page, Carol. Earth to Carol, come in, please. The first page. Earth to Carol, come in, please. Raise your hand if you thought that was funny. Yeah, everybody likes that except who? Except Carol. Anytime you as a teacher or a parent decide to use sarcasm with kids, understand that you created a victim. Now that little throwaway line that I threw at Carol, I will forget within five minutes, you will forget within five minutes, but it's very likely to stay with Carol for the rest of the day. Those little throwaway sarcasms we use. Jody, what color is the print in the first page? Black. What does it say, Lee? Activity one. What is that what it says, Stephanie? Yes. Turn to the next page. What color is the next page, Lee? Yellow. Uh, what kind of animal is top of that page, Jody? Uh, tiger. A that's not a tiger, Carol. What kind of animal is top of that page? It's a cat. It's a cat. Uh, famous story with a cat, Ned Maria. Famous story with a cat, Ned. Famous story with a cat, Ned Maria. Famous story with a cat, Ned. Give me one famous story with a cat, Ned Maria. Okay. Does anxiety affect performance? Does anxiety affect performance? Of course it does. According to this, Maria doesn't know one story with a cat, Ned. <laughs> give Maria a call tomorrow. She'll give you thirty of them. But in this situation, with the anxiety we've created already, with the anxiety that we've created in the short period of time, Maria's unable to get that information out. Famous story with the cat, Carol. Three little kittens. Famous story with the cat, Debbie. Garfield. Famous story with the cat, Carol. Incredible journey. Famous story with the cat, Kelly. 
Melissa? Karen? Uh, Kim? Merrick? Okay, let's take a look at what's happened now. I accepted the answer, I don't know, from Kelly. What were the next four answers that I got in a row? I don't know. See, we have to really put this under a microscope and look at this. You people have been learning disabled now for six minutes, and many of you have quit. Not six years, not 16 years, the way the LD child lives, but six minutes. And many of you, once I began accepting the answer, I don't know, how many of you decided if he calls on me, I'm going to say, I don't know. Raise your hands. <laughs> yeah. Many of you have decided if he's going to accept, I don't know, as an answer, I'm going to stop trying to think of a response and I'll just say, I don't know. Okay, Jody, what kind of animal is that? Top of the page again? Cat. Down below, what kind of animal is that, Lee? Duck. Stephanie, what kind of noise did a duck make? Quack. Famous story with the duck in it, Nancy. Famous story with the duck in it, Karen. You were ready for me, weren't you, Nancy? Famous story with the duck in it, Karen. <laughs> Famous story with the duck in it. Come on. Famous I, story with the duck in it. One famous story with the duck in it, Karen. I can't think famous of story, story with the duck in it. Fam it doesn't um, take a lot of thought, Karen. Famous story with the duck in it. Um, one famous story with the duck in it. Ka Nancy knew one. Yeah, well, Nancy's better than I am because <laughs> I can't think of Debbie, a story. Debbie, famous story with the duck in it. Famous story with the duck in it. Famous story with the duck in it, Karen. Make way for duck. Famous story with the duck in it, Kelly. I was going to say Donald. Oh, she took my answer, don't you like it? <laughs> Melissa, famous story with the duck in it. Turn the page, Karen, what kind of animal is that? Top of the page. I'm sorry? A pig, what kind of noise did a pig make, Kim? Famous story with the pig in it, Merritt. Famous story with the pig in it, Merritt. Famous story with the pig in it, Paula. Down below, what kind of animal is that, Car? Swan. Uh, what kind of noise did it make, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, see, what you've got to see sometimes is you've got to see Fat City from where I'm standing. Because I've got 15 people looking up at me, and I say, what kind of noise does a swan make? And everybody takes a sudden interest in their shoes. They look kind of like, they're both on there. In other words, what happens is, after, after nine minutes of a learning disability, you people have already bought into one of the, the credos that controls the life of the LD child, which is this. If I can't see the teacher, the teacher can't see me. And so what you do is you look away because we all know, we all know that it is the human reaction to anxiety. The first human reaction to anxiety is to look away from the source of the anxiety. And yet, what's the first thing we say to kids when we yell at them? You look at me while I'm yelling at you. You look at me while I'm spoiling your life. There are so many things we do as parents and teachers that don't make any sense. How many people here insist that kids look at them when we yell at them? I do all the time, and it makes absolutely no sense, and it's contrary to everything we know about the human reaction to anxiety. Okay? Turn the page, stop the page, camera, what kind of animal is that? Oh, a horse. What kind of noise did it make, Debbie? Nay. Famous story with a horse in a car. Black Stein. Famous story with a horse in it, Kelly. Black Beauty. Melissa, famous they story with a horse in it. They took both my <laughs> answers. Karen, famous story with a horse in it. Kim, famous story with a horse in it. Come on. Famous story with a horse in it. Merrick. Black Beauty. What kind of animals down below the bottom of the page, Kelly? A camel. Okay. Just keep the books right where they are. Let's talk for a second. What about the pace of the class? <laughs> Too what? Too what? Too fast. Okay, now this is important to understand as a mainstream teacher particularly. Learning disabled kids have a difficult time processing the language. As a result of that, if I ask a group, a mainstream classroom, fourth grade class with some learning disabled children and some non-disabled children, and I say, would you please tell me who, the who was the first president of the United States? The non-LD children are processing an answer. The learning disabled children have to process what? The question. So in effect, they have twice the processing load to do than the other students in the class. So even if the class is moving at a normal rate, to the LD child seems to be moving at this breakneck speed as we've been talking here. So you say, who was the first president of the United States? The non-LD kids are processing an answer. The LD kids have to process the question. They actually have to go, okay, let's see who. It means it's going to be a person. Was means he's probably dead. First, the one at the beginning. President is probably the one in Washington of the United States. President of the United States. Okay, who's the first president of the United States? Oh, I know that. He raises his hand. Everybody else has gone to recess because he had twice the processing load to do. Lee is my non-LD child. Stephanie is my LD child. And I say, Lee, could you please tell us the name of the book we're reading today? And she says, Huckleberry Finn. 
And I say, Stephanie, could you please tell us who wrote that book? And she says what? Huckleberry, Huckleberry Finn. How many times has that happened to you in the classroom? Why? Because what happens is, Stephanie is so busy processing the first question that she misses the fact that we responded to it, misses the fact that I asked the second question and responds to the last question that she processed. But of course, what happens in a typical classroom? What's the name of the book we're reading, Lee? Huckleberry Finn, good. And Stephanie, who wrote it? And she says, Huckleberry Finn, the whole class laughs. And we say, Stephanie, leave the room. You've disrupted my class for the last time. Now that teacher would not punish uh, Stephanie for being unable to read or are able to do math because she understands a learning disability. And yet the child will be punished for doing, having a processing difficulty and all of those problems are caused by the same thing, which is this inability to process language. So as a teacher, what do you do about that? There are some techniques you can use. Let me show you one very quickly. Stephanie's the LD child in the classroom. What I do is I take Stephanie aside sometime when no one else is around. Just Stephanie and myself. And I sit down and I say, Stephanie, you're having trouble with my lectures, aren't you? Yes, I am, Mr. Lavoie. You talk so fast. Well, as a matter of fact, Stephanie, I don't talk too fast, but it seems that way to you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a little deal. Because I'm sure not only is it difficult for you to process, but you're also nervous that I'm going to call on you. Yeah, I'm so nervous you're going to call on me that I lose track of what you're saying and it makes it worse. Here's a deal we're going to make, Stephanie. I will never call on you unless I'm standing in front of your seat. So while I'm over here lecturing, you take all of your energy and you put it into concentrating on the lecture and understanding and processing the lecture. And don't worry, I won't call on you. So the next day I come into class and I'm standing over here and we're talking about the War of 1812 and I'm throwing questions at Maria and at Kit and at Jody and at Kara and then I look over at Stephanie and I kind of move over in front of her desk and I say, and Stephanie, maybe you could tell us who the president was during the War of 1812. And she answers the question and I say, thank you and move away. No one else knows that that went on. And of course what I do is I ask her questions I know she can answer and eventually, I'll be over here lecturing, and you begin to see her hand goes up, because now she understands that she can survive this experience called volunteering in school. The most common misconceptions about learning disabled children is this. He's very distractible. He has no attention span at all. Using the terms distractible and attention span interchangeably, when actually those are two completely different children. You see, the child with no attention span pays attention to nothing. The child who's distractible pays attention to everything. The learning disabled child is distractible. In other words, he can't focus anything out. So he might be sitting there listening to me talk, and he's interested in what I'm saying, but he's equally interested in my shoes, in my watch, in the fact that his shoes are too tight, in the picture of the Indian behind me. He can't focus anything out. Everything gets his attention. And the same thing happens with oral language. They can't focus that kind of thing out because of the processing deficit. Imagine going to school every day where things seem to be going as fast as we've been going now. No wonder they come up with those strange stomach aches before they go to school in the morning.